Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's something me on Twitter, the Gaming Drag. Today I'm coming back at you with another Let's Play episode of Nevin. So yeah, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. All right, go ahead. I'm watching you. You better be, because that's what you're here for. They stand in front of each other, brandishing their weapons and observing their movements with an almost palpable determination. Gillian holds his great sword in both hands, while Rowan holds a regular straight sword in one hand, apparently using his free arm for balance. First, you will observe the effect of the brand of a rat car in another brand. Why that one in particular? The captain sighs as he gives me the most jaded look I've ever seen. Because if, your enemy, if our enemies want to capture you, they're probably going to need someone who will resist your powers. So you'll have to learn to be inventive if you want to get around the protection this brand gives us. Gillian then turns to Rowan. Go ahead. That's when I perceive the soft light of a brand glowing under the Snow Leopard's armor, around his left thigh. A long vine emerges from under his arm guard to stretch along his hand as if it were a snake, and eventually the plant extends all the way to the other armored feline. Once in Gillian's vicinity, the tip of the vine instantly begins to dangle in the air. As you can see, his control of the plant stops within my perimeter, but that doesn't make the plant disappear, and it doesn't break his control over the rest of the vine. I can see that, but how is he supposed to fight you then? I already told you, by being inventive. Rowan withdraws his vine, and stands guard again. This time, however, the end of the plant clinging to his arm is covered with huge thorns. He uses it as a whip by sending it in Gillian's direction. This time, although he loses control of the vine, the speed at which he attacks causes it to keep its momentum, forcing the panther to cut it with its blade. Rowan takes this opportunity to charge straight at the captain and strikes with the sword. The blade is deflected by the captain's weapon, who counterattacks, bringing his blade down on his opponent. The snow leopard suddenly retreats, and the tip of the panther's weapon jams into what appears to be wood covering Rowan's right, right forearm. Said wood thickens and covers the captain's blade, locking it. I doesn't like Gillian's brand as the re has the reach to prevent his opponent from using his powers. Got you! In that moment of hesitation from the panther, Rowan takes the opportunity to extend the vine hanging from his arm, laying out a row of brambles behind the captain without him noticing. Rather than drop his weapon, the captain approaches the snow leopard violently and tries to bite him in the throat. Caught in this tight hand-to-hand -hand fight, having his sword arm locked in place because of Gillian's blade and without his powers, Rowan finds himself in a tricky situation against a much larger feline. A sudden realization then comes to me, just like when Maleborn was sparring with Gillian. I can sense that this whole exercise is more than just a friendly confrontation. It seems that war is both a passion and an art for them. I would even go so far as to say it's a lifestyle, and neither of them intends to lose. Abruptly, the ground gives way under their feet. A gaping hole is created just as Gillian manages to detach his sword from Rowan's arm. The rift that separates the two warriors is teeming with living roots, and that's when I realize that one of these roots leads to the heel of the Snow Leopard. Meanwhile, the captain has no time to realize the presence of the brambles under his paws as he backs up and steps on them, letting out a grunt of pain mixed with surprise. Motherfu- Take it now. Water time. Boy, Rowan's a crafty one. Sneaky snap. Rowan, Rowan gives him no time to swear and leaps over the rift to attack him at once. This forces Gillian to dance among the brambles, half limping from the thorn embedded in his paw. The shrill sound of steel rubbing against steel rings in my ears as the two felines exchange blows. I realize that Rowan's movements are getting slower, and despite his injury, the captain still seems to be in good shape. Is this the after effect of his brand? I've vaguely heard of it before, but this is the first time I've seen someone get tired so suddenly. I also feel like Gillian's assaults are more violent. Gradually, his feline grace gives way to an almost bestial savagery. His greatsword comes down on Rowan's weapon with force, and the latter falters, struggling not to lose his footing. Finally, with a flick of his wrist, the panther slides the tip of his blade under the hilt of his opponent's weapon, forcing him to drop his weapon or risk losing his finger. Risk losing fingers. Ah, uh, uh, I was so close to winning. Yeah, right. I was so close to falling asleep. The captain sneers as he sits down to observe closely his injured paw. Your brambles are nasty. I told you I'd win if I could use my spores. Gillian looks in my direction and beckons me. Bring the bag. I have bandages in it. I get up, taking my time, and drop the bag at his feet. Then he grabs what he needs to treat his wound. That was a lot closer than I thought it would be. That's because I trained him. You don't get to be a royal guard without being one of the elites of this realm. Rowan leans toward me, pretending to whisper. He will never admit that the student can surpass his master sometimes. If you keep this up, I'm really going to kick your ass. I smile as I watch them teasing each other. I must say it's a change to see Gillian like this. It's reassuring in a way. He almost seems nice. Well, I hope, you, I hope you've been watching carefully. I don't intend to give a demonstration like that every time you have something to learn. I must say that was impressive, but what was I supposed to learn? I mean, besides the fact that you have to be inventive against the brand of a Rakhar. 
You need to keep in mind that someone who knows how to handle their brand is not to be taken lightly. And there are more dangerous people out there than Rowan and me. People who will come after you. Ooh, Gillian, you tease. You're always ready to cheer me up in the best way. Eh, you get used to it with time, I suppose. My gaze wanders to his paw wound, and I blink as I look in Rowan's direction. Fortunately, in my... Fortunately, my mind catches up with me before I can ask any silly questions. It can't be easy being immune to brand healing. Eh, I don't miss much. Rowan is terrible at it anyway. It's not my fault I was hired to kill people and not heal them. I chuckle and try to get serious again when I see Gillian's disapproving look. Am I allowed to ask more questions or are you going to lecture me? Not now. I don't intend to answer on an empty stomach. I chuckle as the captain pulls out a long sausage from the bag, biting into it with a sigh of relief. Mmm, so tasty. Once he's finished with the piece of meat, the captain clears his throat. So, what do you want to know? Well, I was wondering why the flames disappeared when you fought that bandit the first time we met. I mean, Rowan's plants didn't disappear during your fight. He just lost control of them. Hmm. The flames of a brand of Argon need to be maintained by its possessor. They have no source, no fuel, so they simply disappear. Some brands have more, have more advantages than others against mine. Besides, I've been training against Argon's brands for a while, so that bull didn't stand a chance. Why do you train against these brands in particular? I have many reasons, and one of them is that I have to fight Tenok during our prince's birthday tournament. I fully intend to win, and I imagine he's also trained to beat me. Oh, knowing his love of, uh, theatrics, I have no doubt that he will do his best to make this fight last. I sprawl on the ground with a sigh, relaxing at the touch of- relaxing at the touch of grass tickling my ears. Hmm. <clears throat> Got my little lava lamp set up in the corner of the room. Looks nice. I'm already looking forward to it, and I'm also eager to be part of the show. Aren't you supposed to be singing to kick off the whole festival? Yes, and to top it all off, I'm also supposed to demonstrate my powers. The problem is, right now, the only thing I know is how to freeze pebbles in time. How can- hey, you can do a lot of stuff with that. Let's just get the crowd to throw rocks at you while you block them all. I have a sudden vision of a cascade of boulders falling in my direction. I, I think I'll keep practicing to find something else. In the worst case, you'll always have that option. He grins, clearly amused by his little quip while Gillian finishes eating and stands up. Get up now. You've had a demonstration, so it's time for you to work. Draw your sword. I guess lying in the grass for the rest of the session was a bit much to ask. I swear to you, a cat, I think Gillian and Rowan are trying to kill me. Are you sure you're not overdoing it? And me? Overdoing it? Never. My training with the two guards wore me out, and despite my many pleas, I them agreed to carry me on the walk back to the castle. I will find a way to extract my revenge. There's no way I'm letting this go. Fortunately, I am in a much more peaceful environment, one that is much more in my element. A cat and I are in his room, firmly resolved to prepare ourselves as best we can for Mielborn's birthday and its opening song. Unlike the contest, I can't just sit and sing something I like. The choice of the song will set the tone for the rest of the festival. However, that's not quite where my mind is at the moment. And Vol, I swear that that old boar wouldn't be able to do be nice if his life depended on it. Is he really that awful? Blah, 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 your brand is a miracle of the gods, and blah, 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 you should pay more respect to it, blah, blah, blah. The hawk raises a talon to hide his smile, while I gesticulate, exaggerating my imitation of the priest. I'm glad to see you're doing better. Better? Compared to yesterday, after our meeting with Sven, you were absent. Oh, I, uh, yeah, he knows how to hit where it hurts, that's all. I guess he knows me pretty well in the end of the at the end of the day. I should have done something sooner. No, no, it's not your fault. Plus, I must admit that it was a pleasant surprise to see you fly to my rescue. You're my feathered knight for a few seconds. I wink at him as he blushes and looks away, unable to hide his own embarrassed smile. For real, I'm not kidding. I'm really grateful for what you did and for what you said afterwards. Hmm, okay. I meant it, you know. I didn't say all that just to make you feel better. The falcon dips his gaze into mine again, as if to prove to me that he's not lying. That's when I feel my heart leap in my chest. It shouldn't be allowed to be this adorable. No, no, let's focus. This is not the time. You're learning new things anyway, right? That's the most important thing. I'd rather learn by having fun. I don't doubt it for a second. Unfortunately, life isn't that simple. Yeah, well, life could make an effort to be simple once in a while. Don't you think we'd end up bored if it was? Uh, probably yes, but in that particular case, I feel like I have the right to complain. Well, I certainly won't stop you from complaining. A cat laughs again as he gently strokes the strings of his lute. 
You know, ever since I arrived here, I've realized how different the Frostians and the Macadians are. And yet, as each day passes, I discover new things, new habits to learn, and new challenges to face. I feel happier here. It starts to feel like a true home. It's strange, isn't it? I'll probably never set foot in my country again, and I'm surrounded by strangers. I'm the happiest I've been in many years. I don't think it's strange. He turns to me with a surprised look. From what you told me back home, you had to hide who you really were. Here you embrace who you are. As long as we prove our usefulness, we can be whoever we want to be. That's always been the mentality in Frostfang. It's not all positive, obviously, but I think for people like you or me, it allows us to focus on what we really love. I guess so. But I think it's also due to the people who support me now. I'm really glad I met you, Eloi. Hey, me too, you know? Me too. My gaze lands in a cat's once again, and for a brief moment I feel the almost irresistible urge to kiss him. Here and now. I have two problems, though. First is that I have no idea how I'm supposed to do that with someone who has a beak. The second, however, is the one that really stops me from kissing him. When we're facing each other, his look is identical to Vigo's. And I can't help but wonder, all these things I feel for the Falcon, is it really for him or just because he reminds me of my former musician? The idea cuts me off from doing anything. I refuse to do that to a cat. If I ever want to go further with him, I want to be sure it's for the right reasons. This moment passes and an awkward silence settles between us. It is finally a cat who breaks it as he plays a few notes with his lute. So, do you have any idea what we could do for our first act as royal bards? I almost sigh, glad that the bird is offering me this escape. I have a few. I think we obviously want something warlike, considering how like it how, how they like it here. Plus, it'll give our favorite prince our favorite prince in armor an occasion to show he's a warrior first and foremost. Also, I'm gonna give you a solo. It'll give you a chance to shine as well, while I focus on a way a way to show off my brand. Are you planning on incorporating it in our musical act? Yeah, I don't really have a choice. Uh, Aeon practically ordered me to show my powers in public. Do you have any idea how to do that? Not yet. All I can do is freeze a little rock in the air. It's not exactly impressive, but with practice, I'm sure I'll figure something out. Hmm. In the meantime, I'll sing you. I'll sing you some of my ideas. If you like any of them, we can always go. We can always go with that for now. Perfect. I'll listen carefully then. And during the next few hours, I sing him several songs from my repertoire, which, at least in my opinion, fit with what we are asked to do. A cat accepts or rejects some of them, and we work that way for the rest of the day. From time to time, I take advantage of being in the middle of singing to awaken my brand, which does not fail to attract a cat's attention, since he is obviously amazed by what he sees. It would seem that any song will do as an awakening gesture. That's good to know. Oh, Excuse me. We eventually stop, and we both start to get tired. And as I glance out the window, I see that the sun is starting to set. Well, we'll have been there longer than I thought we would. Ooh, excuse me. We were immersed in our work, that's all. Is it really work if it's what I like to do? A cat happily smiles before stretching with a yawn. It's like you've had enough for the day. Sorry, it's just that... Don't worry, my eyelids are getting heavy too. A little rest won't hurt, especially if we do this again tomorrow. A cat nods silently. We then go downstairs to eat, and the rest of the evening goes as peacefully as possible, which I'm not going to complain about. The day is, this day is tiring enough as it is. That's why, once I get into bed, I collapse and close my eyes as I sink like a stone into slumber. Vol stares at me with authority, and I return it defiantly. I'm absolutely on my knees. I'm aching all over. What the fuck did Gillian do to me? I see you look perfectly awake today. Yeah, yesterday was a rough day. Painful, but full of things to learn. Have you even trained with your brand like I asked you to? Mm-hmm. I've tested my awakening gesture. It works with other songs, too. Perfect. Today we have some experimenting to do. Experimenting? I'm not sure I like that word in this context. I haven't forgotten that he crushed his own hand with a hammer the first time we met. The incident at the end of our lesson yesterday gave me something to think about. The incident? You mean the thing I hallucinated? Exactly, because if it didn't actually happen, what you described to me is something I considered. You considered throwing a pebble in my face? If necessary, yes. Pain or panic can sometimes be useful in unlocking someone's powers. The urge to tell him to fuck off is very, very, very strong. So, what was the idea? To throw more rocks at me to see how angry I can get? No, but I wonder if there is another component to Nevin's power. What do you mean? Activate your brand. It will be clearer with an example. I give him a doubtful look. I wish you would explain to me clearly what he has in mind. I have moderate confidence in his ability to teach me anything but without pain. But I eventually hum a little tune, letting the soft warmth of my brand awaken in my back. Each time it feels easier, more natural. I wonder how long it will be before I can do it without the awakening gesture. 
Meanwhile, Vol slowly raises his signature pebble above his palm. Let's repeat yesterday's training. Freeze that stone again. I guess we can say that training is my first stepping stone. It looks like my pun does not reach Vol as he observes... As he observes me with the same old authoritative look. Hmm, yeah, definitely my most difficult audience. I focus on the small stone floating in the air and the white circle appears almost immediately this time. Gradually, I stop its movements while Vol puts his brand to, this, puts his brand to sleep until the stone remains completely frozen in time. Perfect, you can stop. That's it? I thought we were going to experiment. Oh, we are. Don't worry. Okie dokie. I stop focusing on the floating pebble and it immediately falls to the ground. A few moments later, I feel a sharp pain in my cheek while, once again, events that never happened invade my mind. I'm not sure what's going on. I managed to do it yesterday without any problems. I look at the stone that continues to turn slowly under the impulse of Vol's brand. No matter how hard I stare at it, no matter how hard I stare at it, it doesn't seem to stop moving. All right, I'm gonna pause it right there, y'all. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. All right, y'all. I'm gonna head off for the rest of the evening. Y'all have a wonderful rest of your night. I love you all, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye bye.